What we do is we look to help governments catalyze the implementation of their own domestic laws that are consistent with human rights. So in other words, there are, within the last quarter of a century, it's been fantastic because we see emerging democracies and really new hopes, new dreams. But one of the problems is that the laws are actually just on the books, but they're not implemented on a daily basis. So for many people, it's just a dream, not reality. So they're holding elections, but actually they're throwing people in jail without trial. So this democracy doesn't trickle down all the way. Is and that about right? And it's not necessarily that they're throwing people in jail for political reasons. It's just on an everyday basis the rule of law is broken down so that people are picked up arbitrarily or they're detained or tortured and although it's against the law there actually aren't defenders who are there to defend them or make sure that their due process rights are defended. It, of course it's a fantastic series of right. programs that you have but what's your pitch to business? What's been your pitch in the past? Well it's really amazing because they really work hand in hand. Businesses are generally looking for um, some kind of insurance, security, that they're putting their money into a place that, into a country or a place where there's security, where there's not, they're not high risk that something's going to happen. And so what we realize is that the rule of law is really the bedrock of a stable society. And it's, this is all civil as well as criminal. So we work together with, with businesses to make sure that it is a stable society. Okay, now clearly Davos has been happy hunting ground. For, for you and for many NGOs over the past few years, do you detect a difference? Are you bracing yourself for a difference this year? Actually, not bracing myself. I'm very, very excited. Um, I think that uh, clearly there is, we're in some challenging times economically, and at the same time, I don't think that it's all about economics. People are really looking at it creatively. I mean, actually, we have seen that there's been an increase even in private donations and corporations, and pe people are really saying, okay, you know, how do we look at this creatively? It's not just about the money, but what are the ways that we can work together to still give ourselves to the greater whole? It's, you know, it's like I said, it's, the bottom line is not always money. Um, NGOs have always been very, very creative about how we put together resources to make the dream a reality. And I think what's interesting now is that you see people, you see corporations, every aspect of society thinking more creatively about how we can really do this together. Well, we're talking about shaping the post-crisis right. world. That's the theme here. So, so what is your vision, if you like, five years out? I mean, by comparison with, well, let's say, where you were five years ago, you know, in, in 2014, when let's all hope and pray this recession is well behind us, where do you think that NGOs like yours will be? Well, specifically for us, what we see is that you know, there's a, right now there's 113 countries that are listed, developing countries that are listed as still having human rights abuses, there's torture in these countries, and it's very problematic. But we see of the 113 countries, 93 of them actually have laws on the books that say you have a right to a lawyer, a right not to be tortured. And what we're looking at is really working together with all these countries to make sure that we can support them so that their implementation of the laws means that people are not tortured and they are not denied their due process rights, that it's really a safe society.